Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia aka Crafty Owl here on the Cat Scrappiness channel to make a quick and easy Thanksgiving themed card. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the Cat Scrappiness channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. We're so glad that you're here again. Like I mentioned in the intro, I'm going to be making a Thanksgiving themed card using some of the new goodies from the latest Cat Scrappiness release. In front of me are the 5x7 never ending rectangles, the box sentiment strips, the thanks with shadow die, the Thanksgiving costume add on set, which today I'm going to be showing you how to use some of the accessory stamps to make a card. If you do want to see some beautiful examples using the Kwaka with the costume, make sure to check out the other videos on this channel and I will also link the Cat Scrappiness blog in that description box below and you can go there and get lots of inspiration. Also today I'm going to be doing a little bit of distressing with the mini detail blending brushes. I just like how these can get into little spaces and I think that they're going to make a nice distress tool for what I'm going to end up creating. If I do leave you with any questions today, make sure to leave those in that comment section below and I'll answer those as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I got out some scraps of craft cardstock and the box sentiment dies. I'm going to be using this one right here and I'm going to die cut as many times as I can from the scraps in front of me. I want these pieces to resemble floorboards or wood planks. So the fact that the die puts kind of an embossed frame around the outside helps that look even more. Now I have done this technique quite a bit in the past and usually I use my ink pad and I run it along the edge of each of the wood planks. Now you can see here it does give me some definition but it's pretty harsh and stark. So what I thought this little mini blender brush would do would give a softer effect and still make the board look aged. You'll see here I'm just going to tap it into my brown ink and I do light circles all the way around the outside edge of the board and then here you'll see the two differences together with like the swiping of the ink pad and the board and I think the one on the right looks much more weathered. I continued this same process until I had all of my pieces of cardstock with the inked edges. While I keep working on my project, I wanted to stop by and give you a heads up about a special little gift bag you'll receive in your cat scrappiness order between now and December 25th, 2021. This little drawstring bag is full of goodies for you. Inside you'll have a little tasty treat, some sprinkles, a cat scrappiness post-it notepad, and this special scratcher ticket. When you get yours, make sure to scratch it off to uncover your discount, and it is valid through February 14th, 2022. Now back to the video. After all of my planks were ready, I needed to cut a cardstock that's going to be the base for these pieces. So I just got out a scrap of white cardstock and I cut it with the third from the largest never ending rectangle die. Now I will end up cutting this down a little bit more later, but it gives me a good size to start with. I am going to lay these planks out kind of like if you were laying a wood floor. I add adhesive to the back and I place the first one probably about 60% of the way onto the cardstock. Then I grab the next board and I butt it right up against the first. 
I will go ahead and trim this piece off and it will end up being the first board on the next row. Just make sure that the inked edge goes on the inside. Now while I continue to do this, I do want to point out that in the past I have always done this technique just by cutting strips with my trimmer. But using that die ensures that all of these pieces are the same. I used to kind of have gaps between or it wouldn't always be cut to the same width and it would throw things off. But these made it so easy to line up everything. Now here after I let it dry for about five minutes, some of the boards were hanging off the bottom. So I chose another die from the set, just a little bit smaller than the first, and I ran that through my die cutter to finish this piece off. Now you might notice here that now my ink edges have went away on the ends and at the top and bottom. So all I do is bring back in my ink pad and the little detail brush and I go around the outside. To add some more decoration to this piece, I'm going to be using the acorns, the pumpkin in the lower left, and the two leaves to kind of stamp my own pattern paper. Now when I do this technique, I like to set up all three of my stamps on one clear block. That way I'm stamping multiple images at a time and I just think it helps me go with a more free form kind of look. I'm going to use the same brown ink that I sponged on the edges and I just start by stamping in the upper left hand corner making sure the edges hang off and then I go and fill in the piece until it is all covered and here is a look at that. Before I can assemble the card, I have just a little more die cutting to do. I'm going to be cutting a mat for my stamped piece from the orange cardstock, and then I will be cutting the thanks with the shadow from craft and orange. You'll see here that I cut the word thanks from the center of the mat because that will eventually be covered, and then the shadow for thanks I cut from craft. I brought back in my art glitter glue and I added some dots of adhesive to the back of the thanks die cut. Then I place this onto the shadow and just try to get a nice even border all the way around. I set that to the side to dry while I did a little bit more stamping. I decided that I wanted to stamp the same three images that I use in the background, but I wanted these to kind of help the word or the sentiment stand out on the card. So I stamped them with some Versamark ink, and I did do that twice just to make sure it was nice and juicy. And then I brought in a bronze embossing powder and embossed the three of these images. I thought this color went well with the tans and the browns in the card. Once the powder was set, I brought in my real brush markers and I colored these images. I do just very simple coloring as you can see here and I tried to pick kind of a palette of fall colors and I made sure that this orange was a close match to the orange cardstock on the card already. Once I did get those all colored in, I brought in the coordinating dies and I cut each of those out. Now all of my pieces were ready so I could assemble the card. I matted my stamped piece and then added that to the 5x7 card base, which I did cut off camera just out of a single piece of 85 by 11 craft cardstock. Then I added foam tape to the back of the sentiment, and then I figured out where my images would go, and I placed those flat down, kind of tucked in behind the thanks onto the card front. Now if you know me, you know that I usually say no card is complete without bling. So I brought in my cat scrappiness embellishment case and I looked through some of my sprinkles until I found one that I thought would go well with the card. I chose the Forest Glen Pearl Mix. It has kind of a brown or copper. It kind of reminded me of the embossing powder and my stamped images, of course. And then there's also kind of a little greenish blue hue to it. So I thought that would go well with the nature kind of natural theme of the card. I added six pearls. I added three in the top left in a little cluster. And then I added three in a triangle shape around the word. 
And here's a close up look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.